Uh, thank you for the for organizers for invite, inviting me to give the talk here. So uh, this is the last talk of this workshop, and, and I'm going to talk about some um, quantum algorithms to solve the continuous uh, sampling and uh, optimization problems. So let's get started from the um, definition of the complexity of sampling. So here is the problem that we are um, caring about. So um, Let's assume we, we are giving black box access to some function f from rd to r. So it's a d-dimensional function. And we want to know what is the minimum number of queries to the black box or to, uh, in order to approximately sample from the target distribution defined by uh, the density pi of x proportional to e to the minus f of x. So why should we uh, care about such kind of the problem? Uh, this is because uh, it's a, uh, actually a very fundamental problem in theoretical computer science, and also it has uh, many uh, important applications in many different fields. For example, in statistical physics, uh, here f of x can represent the energy of the state, and this um, problem just uh, correspond to the uh, Gibbs sampling problems, or yeah, uh, and also um, yeah, it's related to the particle function estimation in statistical physics. And, and also in um, Bayesian inference, you also need to um, develop some efficient sampler in order to sample from the posterior distribution. And also in theoretical computer science, uh, so, uh, sometimes we want to um, estimate the volume of a given convex body, and uh, this problem can be reduced to uniformly sample a point inside some convex body. So uh, this kind of the sampling problem is actually a very important problem. So that's why we are caring about. And uh, it's, it's especially we want to know if there exists any quantum advantage to solve this kind of problem. OK, so um, before we move on, I want to make an analog between um, two fields, uh, the area of sampling and the area of optimization. So we probably uh, know more about optimization. For example, there is a very clear separation between the easy and the hard regime for optimization, that is the convexity. Uh, if the function f is convex function, then we know uh, gradient descent can very easily find the global minimum of the function. And if f is, uh, is non-convex, then it has many local minima. And uh, classically, uh, in the worst case, it will be an NP-hard problem to optimize a non-convex function. Although in practice, there exist many, uh, uh, many efficient heuristic algorithms can, uh, work very, can work very well, but we don't have enough knowledge to explain why this is the case. And also in quantum, we also know a lot about the convex optimization. For example, there's a lot of um, quantum papers showing very efficient um, quantum algorithms um, to op uh, in the convex optimization. For, uh, in, including the, some, um, some of the great paper to solve the general convex optimization, and also for some specific convex optimization problems, for example, the linear programming and the semi-definite programming, we also have efficient quantum algorithms that run faster than uh, classical algorithms. Some can achieve uh, even polynomial, uh, even exponential quantum advantage. But for uh, non-convex optimization, we, uh, we know uh, we, we don't have uh, enough uh, study in quantum. Um, there only exists some recent work shows uh, there might be some quantum advantage to um, solve the non-convex optimization problems uh, compared to some particular classical algorithm. So it's not, uh, it's not over any classical algorithm, but maybe some advantage over particular classical algorithm. For example, the, so for example uh, it, it can run uh, faster than stochastic gradient descent, but uh, we don't, we don't have a classical lower bound. So uh, actually, this uh, easy and hard regime for optimization can be translated to the easy and hard regime for sampling problems. So the, um, here, you, we are, in the sampling problem, we also have a function f. So when this function f is convex, then the problem corresponds to the log concave sampling problem. And it's an easy um, problem because we can use the Langevin diffusion, which is the fundamental method in sampling, to easily uh, convert to this uh, target stationary distribution. But uh, when the function f is non-convex, then it corresponds to non-log concave uh, sampling problems. And it's also hard in the classical world, uh, because the Langevin diffusion will take exponential time to, uh, to uh, mix. 
and uh, and we also have some uh, efficient heuristic algorithm for non-log concave sampling problems. But we yes, still we don't have a theory to explain this. But in, but as for quantum algorithms for in sampling, uh, is many problems are widely open. For example, even for log concave sampling problems, we only have some um, quantum algorithm to solve a, a particular uh, instance called the convex body volume estimation. We can achieve polynomial speed up by the by a great work by uh, 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 Shawnick et al. But in, for the general case, it's open. And if, uh, even for uh, and for the non-log concave um, sampling problem, there's no uh, study in quantum. So the purpose of our work is to uh, close some gaps in the sampling world. So we first show a general log concave sampling problems uh, in this uh, work um, with uh, Andrew Charles, Jin Peng Liu, Chun, uh, uh, Andrew Charles, Tong Yang Li, Jin Peng Liu, and uh, Chun Hao Wang. So we show that uh, for, for general log concave sampling problem, we can achieve some polynomial quantum speed ups. And then we uh, move slightly beyond the uh, convex regime, and uh, we consider some uh, non-convex uh, sampling and the uh, optimal Dickin problem. And we can show that in this uh, slightly non-convex regime, we can still achieve some quantum speed ups. And this is the file joint work with Tong Yang Li. Okay. So here is the outline of this talk. Uh, we will um, show some um, quantum algorithms. Oh, right. yeah, just a question. I mean, in the classical case, for the non-log concave, what is the intuition of the proof for which the lambda distribution takes exponential time? Oh, uh, because uh, the, you, you can see here, the distribution has a multi-model. And this will ex uh, extremely slow down your um, diffusion. Okay, so here's the outline of this um, talk. So we will uh, visit some of these um, classical um, problems that are useful in, in sampling and optimization world, uh, namely the log concave sampling and the normalizing constant estimation, and also approximately convex optimization, stochastic convex optimization, and stochastic bandit problems. And we, we will show some quantum algorithm to solve them. Some can achieve um, polynomial quantum speed ups. And uh, uh, for this uh, online learning problem, we can even achieve an, an exponential quantum advantage in terms of the regret. So uh, our main technique is, again, the quantum work. So quantum work strikes again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, in, in, so we, we mainly use the quantum sampling, or in particular, the quantum work to uh, solve these kind of problems. And another technical component of our algorithm is the quantum mean estimation. So uh, since this is, this is the last talk of this workshop, when I prepare this uh, slides, uh, I just realized that uh, these two uh, technical components are closely related to some previous talks in this workshop, uh, to name a few. For example, the quantum work uh, some has some relation to Yolando's uh, talk on Monday. They they use the good tree to show the classical lower bound, where the good tree is a very typical example that quantum work can achieve exponential quantum speed up. And also for the quantum sampling problems, it can be viewed as a special case of state preparation problems. And also the classical Markov chain has been mentioned many many times in the open quantum uh, in open system day, and in particular in, for yesterday's talk by. Jin Bo, uh, she gives a very insightful talk about uh, how to uh, really implement the quantum work in the, uh, on, the, on some um, quantum circuits. So that, that's a very great talk. And, and also for quantum mean estimators, uh, it's related to um, Rabin's talk on Monday, uh, which he, he, gives, uh, uh, he, he, he showed how can we efficiently estimate the mean if we have the source code. So yeah, just these um, two um, quantum techniques are very important. Yeah, and th that. Uh, but the, the for, uh, I want to mention that uh, in this talk uh, we are not going to improve these um, two technical tools, uh, and we will not uh, open the black box. We just consider them as some tools in our quantum algorithmic toolbox, and I, I want to show you some um, interesting applications of these tools. Okay, so let's get started from the log concave sampling. This is the more formal definition of the log concave distribution. So we consider the uh, probability distribution pi proportional to e to the minus f of x. Uh, we say it's log concave if f from a d-dimensional space to uh, r is a convex function. And it's very common in the sampling literature that we assume f is also a mu strongly convex and L smooth. 
basically means the hashing of the uh, function f is bounded uh, by mu and l, and we also define a parameter kappa to be l over mu, be the counting number of this function f, and this kappa is a very important parameter because it characterizes the complexity of sampling this uh, target, di target distribution. And here are some uh, examples of uh, the log and cube distribution. For example, if f, uh, uh, you can consider some uh, high, dim high dimensional Gaussian distribution will be log on Q, and also the uniform distribution over some convex body in high dimensional space is also um, log on Q. And a fundamental and a fundamental approach to log on Q sampling is where the uh, this stochastic differential equation called the Langevin diffusion. So you can see it has um, two terms where the first term corresponds to the gradient flow, and the second term is the Brownian motion. So uh, this gradient flow term, uh, that, uh, that um, particularly explains why there is a very strong connection between sampling and the optimization. And one important property of the Langevin diffusion is that uh, the stationary distribution of this SDE is exactly the target distribution um, pi, uh, proportional to e to a minus f of x. So in other words, if we want to sample from this target dis distribution, we just need to uh, simulate this uh, SDE, the Langevin diffusion. But how can we simulate this? Uh, there are some uh, naive way to discretize this SDE by this. Uh, so we have xi plus 1 equals to xi minus h times gradient of f plus some uh, uh, Gaussian random variable. But one issue of this naive dis uh, discre discretization is that the stationary distribution of uh, this discretized random process is no longer the target uh, lock and cube distribution. It introduces some bias. And in order to um, correct the bias, uh, classically, there's a, a very uh, important algorithm called the Mercosis Adjusted Langevin Algorithm, or MALA. Uh, which combines the long run dynamics with some rejection sampling mechanism to crack the bias. So uh, this algorithm is quite simple. In each iteration, it has two steps. In step one, it first proposes a new point according to the long run diffusion. And in the second step, it will compute some probability and uh, will uh, decide if I will move to this new point or I will stay here. So uh, when we apply this rejection sampling mechanism, then the first, the stationary distribution will become the target distribution, target distribution. And further, the mixing time of this algorithm MALA has a, poly, po, uh, has a polylogarithmic dependence on the accuracy um, parameter epsilon. So in other words, we can use MALA to achieve very high accuracy sampling. And you can also see that in each iteration of MALA, we only need to query the evaluation oracle for the function f and also the gradient oracle for the function f twice, respectively. So it's uh, uh, quite uh, easy to implement this uh, algorithm. So our question is, how can we show, uh, 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 what, what, so the question is, what, uh, what's the quantum speed up for this uh, simple algorithm? Okay, so let's talk about some, uh, some uh, quantum sampling stuff. So ideally, in, in terms of quantum sampling, we actually want to prepare uh, some special kind of the state called the uh, Q sample, uh, which uh, encodes the classical distribution. So if you, if, if you consider pi of x as some classical distribution, and then I want to prepare a state like this form, uh, which uh, has amplitudes uh, equal to square root of pi of x, uh, and uh, I want to mention that this is only one way to achieve sampling in quantum. It's not, it, it, it's not the, the unique way. So yeah, but, but it, it does have some advantage if you have some f um, following procedure like estimating some, some random variables or something. So the complexity is like the complexity to the Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that, that's also a, a very a good question. So in this talk, we only care about the classical and the quantum query complex. So uh, this kind of the Q sampling problem has been studied for a long time. Uh, so we know that uh, if the distribution is some easy distribution, in particular the density function, we know how to uh, efficiently integrate it, then we can very efficiently prepare uh, such kind of the quantum state using some control rotation. But in general, uh, this Q sampling is a, a quantum hurry problem. 
uh, under some complexity theoretic assumptions. Um, but uh, there exists some work by Watson and Barsenti in 2008 shows that uh, we can use uh, some kind of quantum work called the Zagadis work and also uh, the amplitude amplification to achieve the uh, complexity one over square root of delta under, uh, under some assumption on the, uh, for, 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 the, for the distribution. And here, delta is the spectral gap of the Markov chain. And our algorithm will be based on uh, this uh, these results. OK. So uh, in order to talk about our algorithm, we still uh, revisit the quantum, important quantum technique called the discrete time quantum work. So uh, here are some uh, basic definition of uh, classical Markov chain. And if we look into the transition, uh, stochastic transition operator of this Markov chain, we can view it as a, a two-step process. So in each, uh, in, uh, each step of the quantum work, it can be further divided into two sub-steps. And we consider the um, transition operator P actually acting on two registers, X and Y, where the first register contains the current point in the quantum work. And the second register contains the history, the previous point of this um, random process. So in step one, we will randomly choose a coin. And uh, then according to the probability, we uh, choose a random neighbor of, of the current point X according to the transition um, probability P. And then we uh, store the, uh, we, and then we store the, the random neighbor to the second register. And in step two, we swap the first and the second register, uh, which means we move from the uh, x to y star. So uh, this intuition can be translated to quantum work. So we can define a quantum work operator W uh, in a similar way. So we consider W actually uh, acting on two quantum registers, x and y. So uh, in subset one, we uh, not uh, just flip, uh, we, we, we flip a, a quantum coin, but, uh, but you can also view it as a reflection, the second register, through the superposition of all the neighbors of the current point x, um, with amplitudes uh, being square root of the transition probability. And then in, in sub-step two, we still uh, swap this uh, first and second quantum register. It's similar to the uh, classical meaning that we move, from, uh, we, we move from x to y star. So uh, more formally, we can define the Zagadis quantum work operator uh, using, uh, two, uh, unit, uh, using, using two operators, pi and, w, uh, pi and s. So we first uh, define some important state, psi of x, uh, where uh, which is uh, two, which has two parts. The first part is some point x, and the second part is the super superposition of its neighbors. And then we define a a, a projector pi, uh, which uh, pro uh, projects to the subspace spanned by psi of x. And uh, we also define another uh, operator s, which swaps the operator, uh, which swaps the um, two quantum registers. And then the quantum work operator W can be um, defined as S times 2 pi minus i. And you can um, see that this 2 pi minus i actually implements the reflection. So the definition of this quantum work operator W is actually a reflection followed by a swap. And so if you use some unitary U to implement this state style of X, then the operator W can also be expressed in this way. So why do we define such kind of the operator? Uh, one interesting thing is that if you consider an alternative definition, W prime, which conjugates the W with the unitary U here, then you can find that the case power of the uh, operator W prime is exactly the block encoding of TK of P, where P is the transition kernel of the classical Markov chain, and TK is the case uh, Kavishev polynomial. So uh, using this relation, we can easily uh, see the spectrum of the quantum work operator. So if we assume the uh, classical Markov chain is a reversible Markov chain, then all of these eigenvalues are between minus 1 to 1. And uh, we can express this eigenvalue of the transition kernel P as some um, cosine theta of i for some uh, theta i between um, minus pi to pi. And then the 
these eigenvalues uh, can be uh, related to the eigenvalues of the quantum work operator W, which will be e to the plus or minus i times theta of i. So uh, using this relation, we can um, derive that uh, if the transition kernel P has a spectral gap delta, where the spe spectral gap is the, the magnitude between, between one and the second largest uh, eigenvalue of the uh, transition operator P, then the quantum work operator W will have a phase gap about square root of delta. And this square root is actually the source of quantum speed up of the quantum work algorithm. So in particular, we can show, we can show that the uh, discrete time quantum work can quadratically speed, speed up the hitting time of a, re, of a reversible Markov chains. In particular, if you have a graph and it, it contains some um, marked vertex, and you want to uh, either you want to decide if there exists a marked vert, uh, vertex, or even you can uh, you want to find such a marked vertex. You can use the discrete time quantum work, and it will uh, correctly speed up the classical time. And here uh, is the definition of the reversibility of the Markov chain, which means um, P should satisfy the detailed balance condition. Uh, why do we need it to be reversible? This is because uh, if the Markov chain is irreversible, then the, the spectral property, um, I'm, I um, read here, um, may not hold. It may even have an eigenvalue larger than one. So in, even in classical world, we don't have a full, uh, full, fully understanding of the, of, of the mixing time of irreversible Markov chains. So that's why we assume the classical Markov chains is reversible. And here I want to show you some examples of the uh, gap system. So because you may wonder, uh, is this a natural assumption that the transition operator P has a spectral gap? And then the answer is yes. It's a quite natural definition. And there are many useful examples of the Markov chain that contains uh, uh, some non-trivial spectral gap. For the first example is the Johnson graph, which is defined by all of the subset of size, uh, of size m uh, of the universe of n elements like this. So for this kind of graph, we, we have an, an explicit formula for its spectral gap. And this graph is very useful in, like, in solving many certain problems. For example, if you use the quantum work to solve the element distinctness problem, then you need to um, do some quantum work on this kind of the graph. And another more physical example is the Eisen model with a Markov, with a Markov can called the global global dynamics. So the target distribution is like this, uh, with uh, the density proportional to e to, uh, e to the some quadratic form um, plus some h uh, inner product with x, where x is uh, plus, uh, plus or minus 1 to the n. So you have an n vortex. And what's the global dynamics? In each iteration, it will first randomly choose a vortex like this. And then it will compute the, uh, the marginal distribution of this uh, vortex uh, according to the target uh, stationary distribution, which means it will look at the sign of its neighbors. So it's a, you, you can use this local information to, comp to compute this uh, marginal distribution. And then it will uh, sample the sign of this vortex according to this, di uh, according to this distribution, like this. So uh, this, this kind of the uh, Eisen model with global dynamics has been studied for, may, uh, for, for a very long time in the classical world. And there are um, tons of um, papers developed many advanced techniques to study all kinds of these models, and the, in particular the spectral gap and the mixing time with many different parameter regimes. OK, so let's go back to the sampling question. So the question is, how can we use the discrete time um, quantum work to solve the sampling problem? In other words, um, how can we generate a sample from the stationary distribution? So classically, the number of steps we needed to uh, sample, uh, to generate the sample from the stationary distribution correspond to the mixing time of the Markov chain. So uh, for if the Markov chain is reversible, then the classical mixing, mi mixing time can be bounded by 1 over delta times log of 1 over minimum probability. 
We can also use the discrete time quantum work to uh, do the Q sampling for, for the stationary distribution, where we want to prepare such kind of the Q sample. But in the most general case, the cost will be one over square root of delta times one over square root of minimum probability. So if you compare these um, two equations, then you can find that we have achieved quadratic speed up in terms of the spectral gap delta, but we also have an exponential slowdown in terms of the minimum probability. And unfortunately, for many uh, important problems, the minimum probability will be exponentially small. So actually, uh, they, uh, so actually in the worst case, if we use the discrete, discrete time quantum work to um, do the Q sampling problems, then it will be uh, exponentially uh, slow. That's the OCM 2008 result. No, no, it's not 2008. It may, might be like a, uh, even earlier. The, the, the last uh, yeah, 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 it's earlier. Yeah. Earlier, you had a table. The first work to get the delta to the minus one half was 2008. Yeah. You can go back to the complexity table. Yeah. The first time achieving order. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so is it the same result? Uh, right, 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 right. Pi x. Right, but, but the main purpose of this work is to get rid of the second term, the square root of minimum probability. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, but they also improve the data, data dependence. Yeah. Okay, great question. So, uh, yeah, so now the question is, um, can we do better? if we uh, add some assumptions on the classical Markov chain. So that's what the 2008 result does. So um, they consider not only a single Markov chain, but they consider a sequence of Mark uh, classical reversible Markov chains, uh, for example, M0 to MR, and uh, uh, let the stationary dis distribution be pi 0 to pi of R, such that we have three assumptions. First, uh, each Markov chain has a speckle gap at least delta, and second, for two adjacent uh, stationary distributions, it has uh, uh, some overlap at least t, and this con assumption is called the quantum simulated annealing or QSA condition. And uh, third, we assume the first Q sample of pi zero is easy to prepare. Then there exists some quantum algorithm to prepare the last Q sample of pi of r using uh, one over square root of delta times r over p cos to the quantum work operator. So in other words, if we can guarantee that the overlap is large enough, like p equals to omega of 1, then we can indeed achieve a quadratic speed up over the classical mixing time. Yeah, so now we wonder if we can directly apply this theorem to speed up the MALA, like this algorithm. So uh, if we want to implement the quantum work operator, uh, in, in particular, if we don't actually uh, care about uh, what, what's the circuit layout, we only care about the qu um, query complexity, then what we only need to worry is how to implement the unitary U that prepares such kind of the state. And for MALA, we managed to show that uh, it, uh, we can indeed in, uh, implement such kind of the unitary using constant query to the um, quantum evaluation oracle and the quantum grading oracle for the function f. But still, there's an important issue that uh, prevents us from directly using this theorem to speed, up, to speed up MALA. This is because of the speckle gap assumption. So for discrete system, like the Ising model or the Johnson's graph, the speckle gap is uh, relatively easy to bound. But for MALA, it's a, a sampling algorithm in the continuous space. And the speckle gap will be extremely hard to, direct, uh, to bound directly. So uh, one intuition is that uh, the speckle gap uh, actually characterizes the mixing behavior of the, of the Markov chain in the worst case. In other words, it, you start from any initial distribution, then as long as you uh, do the random work for the mixing time, then you, can, uh, then, uh, then you are guaranteed to, uh, to get the target stationary distribution. But, Actually, in practice, we don't start from any like AL conditions initial distribution. We want to start some average case distribution or some good distribution. In particular, we want to start from we, we want to have some uh, warm start. And classically, they have developed several techniques to 
overcome the spectral gap barrier. For example, um, they, they define some like uh, S conductance or average conductance and uh, many other uh, similar um, notations to dis uh, discounting the error effects of some small and problematic sets in measuring the mixing time. And also, we can only focus on some um, good initial distribution with some warmness, which is called the warm start of the Markov chain. And using these techniques, we can, uh, even if we cannot directly bound the spectral gap of some uh, classical Markov chains, we can still analyze its mixing time starting from some particular initial distribution. And we want, we want to know if we can adapt these classical techniques to analyze the mixing time of the quantum work. So we gave, we gave a positive answer to this question. In particular, in our work and also in some previous work, the quantum volume estimation paper, we show an effective spectral gap lemma for quantum work. So namely, let's assume M to be a classical Markov chain with stationary distribution pi, and we let pi zero be an initial distribution that classically mixes in T steps. And we further assume pi zero is a warm start with respect to the stationary distribution. Then even if even though the, there might exist some um, bad eigenvalues that are larger than 1 minus 1 over t for the transition kernel p, these um, bad eigenvalues will not be effective during the quantum work process. In other words, effectively, we can think the uh, spectral gap of the Markov chain will be uh, 1 over t. So that, that's the effective spectral gap lemma. So using this lemma, we can actually show that uh, Let's assume we have a warm start for MALA. In particular, we, we want to have a quantum warm start, which means we are giving access to some quantum unitary U that prepares the Q sample of the initial state pi zero, and this, uh, this pi zero has some, warm, has some warmness with respect to the stationary distribution. Then there is a quantum algorithm to output a state that is epsilon close to the uh, target Q sample pi, with some um, query complexity, square root of kappa times um, d to the one quarter. Uh, let's recall that kappa is the quantity number of this um, function f, and d is the dimension of f. And for comparison, classically, the mixing time in this warm start regime is kappa times square root of d. So we actually achieve a quadratic speed up in terms of kappa and d. And also, uh, we can view this results as a special instance of of some um, state preparation, and we are giving some initial state that has a large initial overlap. And note that the query cost of our algorithm is actually sublinear in terms of the log of the system size. So it's um, quite efficient. If you using some uh, ODE approach, like uh, you are sim simulating the um, fork, uh, fork fork point equation to directly prepare such kind of such kind of the state, then uh, you are very likely to incur a linear dependence in terms of d, in terms of the d to the one quarter. Now, question. So for this warm startup, is that there exists a warm startup, or is there exists a criteria so that this class of uh, there exists a uh, uh, criteria? Yeah. So actually, it corresponds to uh, yeah this de this definition. So basically, means uh, for each of the measurement measurable subset, uh, it has a the pi zero and pi are very close. For those of who, us who are not working with warm, isn't that related to the Chigar constant expander graphs or the beta, mm. where you somehow compare? Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, very, very related to the Chigar constant. Yeah, if you, because there's a uh, you, you can use the Chigar inequality if, if you bound the conductance, then you also bound the spectral gap. But uh, for, for this kind of work, they actually consider some uh, relaxed uh, kickers in quality. That they don't um, directly bound the conductance, but they bound some, something like a S conductance. to basically show that uh, if you combine the warmness condition and also the bound on the S conductance, we can also uh, uh, derive a mixing time bound for this kind of the particular initial distribution. Yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, so now let's consider, consider a harder problem. What if we don't have a warm start? Right? Because in practice, we actually, if we don't have any prior information for our target distribution, then how can we do the sampling? One option is we just start from some Gaussian distribution. 
But in this case, it has been studied in um, several classical papers, and they show that um, the classical mixing time will be um, um, kappa times d. So even if it's slower than the warm star case, it's still very efficient. However, we cannot directly apply our theorem um, to speed up this uh, non-warm star model. This is because the overlap between the Gaussian distribution with the target um, Q sample is exponentially small. So, yeah. What was was the algorithm? Oh, uh, yeah. So this is a classical algorithm. We right. directly embed this into a quantum work framework. So like we can implement the quantum work operator for this um, classical Markov chain. What does it I mean, you, you, you just implement the uh, update unitary U that prepares this kind of the state. Uh -huh. And in the metropolis step? Oh, uh, yeah, you, you, can, you, you can either use the, uh, some regret, quantum regression sampling technique or some other techniques combined together, but we show that it does work. <laughs> because, um, classic, because classically, you can also bound the, the expected number of the re regression step will not be um, very large. So it, it means with like a very high probability, it will accept the proposed point. So yeah, yeah it's quite um, technical. So. Okay, yeah. So um, if we consider the non-warm star case, then we will face the problem that the overlap is too small. How can we overcome this? So we use the idea of simulated annealing. So we construct a sequence of slowly varying Markov chains from pi zero to pi m, uh, to, pi m to pi m plus one, where so pi zero is just a Gaussian distribution, and pi m plus one is the, uh, the target log concave distribution. Then for each of the in intermediate distribution pi of phi, we define this with density proportional to e to the minus f minus some uh, quadratic form x norm square over two sigma i square, where sigma i is some uh, increasing uh, sequence. So you, you can see that when sigma i is small, then the second term will dominate. So the, st the distribution will be close to some Gaussian distribution. And when sigma i is large, larger and larger, this distribution will, the first term f will dominate, and this di distribution will get closer and, and closer to the log concave distribution. So for, the, for this initial uh, distribution pi zero, it's very easy to, pre to prepare because it's a Gaussian. Then we can use the quantum work algorithm to evolve, the, to evolve this chance of uh, stationary distribution through like we can use quantum work, um, quantum, quantum work algorithm to evolve the Q sample for pi i to Q sample for pi i plus one. And we need to guarantee that the overlap between two adjacent um, distributions is large enough for all of this annealing stage. And then in our paper, we show that if we um, take this kind of the sequence of the parameter sigma i, and we take um, about square root d annealing stages, then the quantum work and then the quantum model without warm star can approximately prepare the target Q sample with very complexity square root of kappa times d, where the square root, this square root of d factor comes from the number of annealing stages, and this, prime, and this square root of kappa d comes from the cost per stage. And for comparison, the classical query complexity um, in this regime is kappa times d, so we achieve a quadratic speed up in terms of kappa, but we don't speed up the d dependence. Okay, so any questions? Do you think this is a sharp can? Do you think it can be improved further? Yeah, yeah, I think it, it can be, yeah, in particular this um, part can be improved, but uh, this number of annealing stages is very hard to improve. Yeah, there even exists some classical lower bound. So this basically means as long as you are using this annealing plus quantum sampling approach, then you must pay a square root of d factor. Okay, so now let's talk about one application of this log and sampling problems. That is, we want to uh, not 
only sample from the target distribution, but we want to estimate its normalizing constant of this distribution defined by this um, equation. So uh, this problem is also called the particular function estimation in statistical physics and has been studied in both classical and, and quantum literature. But I want to mention that the prior quantum algorithms mainly focus on discrete systems, and uh, we focus on the continuous working of this problem. So that, that's the difference. So um, the high-level idea is still the simulated annealing plus the some log concave sampler. So we still use the, the same annealing schedule. Then we can rewrite the normalizing constant as a tidy scooping product, z1 times the products of zi plus 1 over zi. Then in e for each of the annealing stage, we first sample from, we first sam um, draw k samples from the stationary distribution pi of phi. And then the goal is to estimate this uh, ratio, zi plus 1 over zi, uh, using these um, k samples. And we can show that this zi plus 1 over zi can be written as an expectation of some function k of phi over the uh, distribution pi of phi. So actually, we can use this mean estimator to estimate uh, this ratio. And in order to guarantee the accuracy of this estimation, we need to um, bound that for each annealing stage, uh, it has a bounded uh, relative variance like this. And fortunately, this has been done in the classical paper by Gali and Lu. So for this kind of the uh, classical algorithm, we can actually ad identify two tasks. First, for um, th this corresponds to some log concave sampling problem because we want to draw k samples from the from this log concave distribution. And for uh, this step, which corresponds to the mean estimation problem. So this inspires us to design a quantum algorithm that combines the, our log concave sampler with some quantum mean estimators. So that's our algorithm. So we directly use our quantum MALA together with some non-destructive mean estimation algorithm developed by Haru and Wei and uh, also Shoran et al. So we show that uh, we can achieve an uh, epsilon relative error for estimating the particular, uh, the normalizing constant using d to the 3 over 2 times kappa 1 over 2 times 1 over epsilon queries to the evaluation oracle and grading oracle of the function f. So let's skip the uh, proof uh, um, technical details of the proof of this result, but we uh, consider if we can further, further improve this result, because you can see it does not have a linear dependency in terms of d. So actually, uh, in the classical world, uh, MALA is not the only way to discretize the Langevin diffusion. There's some other uh, method. For example, one of them is the uh, randomized midpoint method for under them Langevin diffusion, or ULD RMM, developed by Shen and Li in 2019. Here is the complexity for MALA and ULD RMM in the sampling task and in estimation task. And if you are curious, this is the scheme of the ULD RMM, which is some more advanced implement of the ULD, the under them long run diffusion. But it's not very important to this talk. So if you look at this complexities, you can see that in terms of the sampling task, ULD RMM actually have a poly vinyl epsilon dependence in the query complexity, while the MALA has a only log vinyl epsilon dependence. So in other words, for ULD RMM, you cannot achieve a high accuracy sampling, while MALA can achieve a high accuracy sampling. But for the estimation task, uh, classically, you must pay vinyl epsilon square, so you cannot achieve a log vinyl epsilon in the estimation task. So, uh, so the <coughs> It's very uh, so. It's okay. So it's possible to use the ULD RMM in in, term, in the estimation task. And uh, uh, more important advantage is that ULD RMM also improves the dependence on the dimension of the function. So in in the classical um, paper, Gali and Lu use the multi-level Monte Carlo to achieve a nearly optimal epsilon dependence for ULD RMM. Oh, uh, the epsilon square is the classical lower bound. So basically for estimation, you cannot achieve log one of epsilon. You must pay this epsilon square. 
so which means it doesn't matter um, for the MALA, for your DMMs uh, one or one or epsilon um, dependence. Okay, so uh, I may not have more time to talk about this multi-level Monte Carlo, but uh, for short, uh, we apply this. Uh, we have we have applied the quantum version of the multi-level Monte Carlo together with our sampling framework to achieve such kind of the um, com um, quantum complexity to to the normalizing constant estimation task. And uh, this is a summary of our results in our first paper. So basically, um, for sampling tasks, we use the uh, quantum mala to achieve the polynomial speed up in terms of kappa and uh, also kappa and d for the warm case. And for the normalizing constant estimation problem, we don't have a polynomial speed up in terms of kappa and d, but we achieve, we achieve a corrective speed up in terms of the epsilon. So we improve the classical one over epsilon square to one over epsilon, and we also prove a quantum query lower bound for like one over uh, epsilon to the uh, sorry this will be minus one plus theta over of one. So actually, this one over epsilon is optimal in the quantum world. Okay, so uh, let's skip this and uh, yeah also yeah and I want to mention there very recently there exists some. Uh, uh, very, uh, some important work that improves the classical log concave sampling complexity to uh, kappa times square root of d, even if you don't have a warm start. So uh, this complexity is believed to be optimal in the classical world. And so uh, if note that our quantum mala has a query complexity square root of kappa times d, so it's actually slower than the state of state of the art classical algorithm. So, uh, but we can also in embed their classical algorithm into our quantum work framework, and we can improve the, the quantum complexity to square root of kappa times d to the uh, 3 over 4. So in terms of kappa, we can still have a quantum speed up, but in terms of the d, we, we are slower than the classical algorithm. This is because of the length of the annealing schedule that we must take. So in order to improve this complexity, we must develop some uh, new techniques yeah, and uh, also there is some classical lower bound for the log concave sampling problem, which is uh, far uh, from the upper bound. So there's a big gap. So it's uh, very interesting if we can improve, uh, we can prove some quantum query lower bound, or we can tighten the classical lower bound. Okay, so let me use like uh, uh, two minutes to talk about the the second <laughs> topic. So actually, we. Uh, also study the approximately convex optimization problem. So this problem is kind of the intermediate problem between convex and non-convex. So we consider that this function capital of f is approximately convex over some convex set if uh, it has an L infinity distance to some convex function f um, within epsilon over d. And you are, uh, you are giving access to the evaluation oracle of this capital of f. You want to find an uh, an approximate minimizer for this approximately convex function. Okay, and for this problem, it's closely, closely related, related to another problem called the stochastic convex optimization. Here, the capital F can be expressed as some convex function plus some independent subgaussian random variable epsilon of x, and then you are giving access to the stochastic evaluation oracle. You still want to um, approximately minimize this convex function little f of x. And this problem has many important applications in machine learning and optimization. So uh, in our paper, we achieve some um, polynomial speed up in, for both approximate convex optimization and stochastic convex optimization. And uh, then I want to show you an important application of our quantum algorithm, which is called the stochastic bandit problem. So we consider uh, th this kind of the bandit problem is uh, uh, has some applications in online learning. So we consider uh, the so-called zero-order stochastic convex bandit problem. So like you have, you have a convex function over some convex set K, and an online learner and the environment will interact over T grounds. Then in each one, the un quantum learner sends some quantum state as queries to the environment, and then environment, environment will apply the stochastic evaluation oracle to uh, to the to the query state and return this to the quantum learner and finally the quantum learner will need to guess the minimizer of the function f and uh, the goal of this problem is to minimize the expected regret 
defined by the total um, distance between your, your guess and the true minimum. And for this problem, classically, the regret has an upper bound like a D, uh, and, and also a lower bound, which both has a square root dependence in terms of t, the number of runs. But we show a quantum algorithm that can solve this problem with regret um, d to the five times poly logarithmic in t, the number of runs. Because the number of runs, so we achieve an exponential quantum advantage in terms of t. So uh, how can we achieve this logarithmic regret? So we basically have uh, three steps. We first construct this quantum approximate convex op optimizer, which implies the quantum stochastic convex op optimizer, and finally we get the quantum stochastic bandit. So I, I, I do not have um, time to talk about these um, two steps, but I want to show you the reduction between um, quantum stochastic convex op optimizer to the quantum stochastic bandit. So basically, you have t grounds. You can consider t grounds as t queries you can make in total. Then the first step is to partition it into log t intervals, which has a geometrically increasing size. Then for each interval, you also further partition it into log t blocks. So for the i interval, in each block, you will have 2 to the i minus 1 over log of t um, um, queries. Then you can use this, kind, this number of queries to run our quantum stochastic optimizer. And let the output be x. I want to xi log of t. Then we pick the minimum of these uh, values as xi. And in the next interval, the quantum learner will always output this xi. Then by, our guarantee of, by, by the guarantee of our quantum stochastic optimizer, we can show that for this, for this xi, its output it has error at most d to the 5 log t over 2 to the i minus 1. And in the next interval to, uh, and in the next interval to uh, t i plus 1, it has only um, 2 to the i queries. So in total, the accumulated regret will be 2 to the i times d to the 5 over 2 to the i minus 1, which will be about d to the 5. And so in total, we will achieve a d, d to the 5 times poly log t in, the, in terms of the total regret. So why this simple algorithm does not work for classical uh, algorithms? This is because here, the uh, quantum stochastic optimizer uh, can achieve 2 to the i minus 1 here. But classically, you can only achieve 2 to the i minus 1 over 2. So it's similar to the one epsilon of versus 2, uh, one, one epsilon square. So in, if you put this 2 to the i minus 1 over 2 here, then you will incur 2 to the i minus, i minus 1 over 2 in in front of the d to the 5, and in total, you will result in the square root, d, square root of t factor in the total regret. So the take home message is that uh, the, the exponential quantum advantage actually comes from a correctly faster error decay rate in the quantum algorithm. OK, so now I want to uh, wrap up and uh, leave some open questions. OK, so these are three open questions that, that I already talked about in this talk. And there are further open questions. For example, uh, is it possible to achieve any exponential quantum advantage in, the, in some sampling problems? Uh, note that in our paper, we only achieve polynomial speed ups. So is there any particular uh, or any special case of sampling problems that, we, that is possible to achieve um, quantum, exponential quantum advantage? Uh, we don't know. And also, uh, can we use any classical sampling techniques like warm star, average conductance, and others to analyze the mixing time of some Limbardians, in particular the Limbardians used to prepare the ground state. That seems very simple, but we don't know if we can use these classical techniques to analyze the mixing time. And another big open question is, uh, can we design any quantum algorithm to solve the stochastic differential equation? Because currently we have algorithm to solve ODE or PD, but what about SDE? <laughs> Yeah, in general, it seems to be a very difficult um, problem, and we may not have any quantum advantage. But I think for some special kind of SE, it's possible to achieve some polynomial or exponential quantum speed ups. And also, uh, can we find more applications of provable quantum algorithms for reinforcement learning or online learning or large language model? Yeah, it's widely open, and I think there's have a lot of opportunities here. 
And lastly, uh, what's the cost of this quantum of algorithm for sampling? And can we do some end-to-end -end cost analysis for this quantum algorithm? And can we actually influence this algorithm to solve some practical problems? Because if you look at the classical sam sampling literature, like there will be there are like uh, more than half of the papers are heuristic, and they do some experiment to solve the very uh, in, very practical instance of the sampling task. Can we do similar thing for quantum algorithms? Yeah, I think that's all I want to say today, and thank you.